Hi everyone, welcome to my PHP tutorial video. In this video, I'm about to explain how to deal with data types in PHP spreadsheet, which are strings, numbers, boolean, date, rich tag, and hyperlink. In this video, you will also learn how to set up default font, set the column width to other size, how to read documentation, how to use PHP spreadsheet classes, and change worksheet name. This video is a part of tutorial series, so make sure to watch the previous version if you haven't already done so. Let's get started. I'm just gonna copy the script I made in the previous chapter, rename it to types, and then open it. Let's remove this part, we don't need it, and make some spaces. Now setting the default font. To set the default font, we need to first get the default style instance, then get the font instance, then set the font name to Arial, and the size to 10. Maybe now you're wondering where do I get those functions, but don't worry, I will explain it later. Now let's make a simple string data. Save it and open in the browser. You can see that the cell B and C value are longer than their width. This happened because we don't specify the column width and the PHP spreadsheet make it default. Now let's specify the width. But rather than fix width, I'm gonna make it to adjust the width automatically. Because we are working with the worksheet, we need to get the active sheet instance, then get the column dimension, then set the auto size to true. Let's see the result. Now let's try to do symbols. Make sure that it is Arial font because we're using Arial. Now let's do the UDF H characters. I'm gonna use Google Translate for this. It seems like I forgot to change the row number. The next data type is numbers. To write a number, you don't need to quote it. You can directly write an integer, float, or negative number. And then there's boolean data type which like numbers. You can just write either true or false without quotes.
Now let's move on to the more complex one, the datetime data type. First, make a variable from current timestamp using PHP time function. For now, let's just put this date into the cell and see the data. We get something like this. I say this is not the correct date for Excel. Let's do a Google search on what PHP a time function does. As you can see here, time returns the current time as a Unix timestamp. Now, what is a Unix timestamp? Unix timestamp is the number of seconds since 1st January of 1970. Let's see how is date being stored in Excel. And you can see here that it is pretty much different from Unix timestamp. And the format is something like this. So let's find a way to convert our timestamp into Excel date. This is where the documentation comes in handy. This looks promising. Let's find a word convert. There, convert a date from PHP to Excel serialized date time. This is what we need. But before we can use it, we need to include this class in our script. So let's just copy the namespace. and use it in our script. Calling the date class and the function. This seems to be a correct date data and what we need now is to define the cell format as a date like this. This is called number format and let's do it by the script. We are dealing with the cell style within the spreadsheet so get the active sheet and the style. And let's see the number format documentation. Let's copy the namespace first so we don't forget it. Here's a lot of default formatting we can use. Now let's find out how to use it. This seems to be what we're looking for. But before we apply, we need to get the number format first. Let's stop for a while now. I'm gonna explain how this chain of method calls works. But feel free to skip this part if you have already understand. So, where does this get number format method comes and why we need to call it? It is all begin with a spreadsheet. As you may already knew, this variable is of PHP spreadsheet class. And because we are about to work with the current seed, we call get active seed. Let's take a peek at the docs. In the main spreadsheet class, there is a method called get active seed, and this method returns a worksheet. So this is the first chain, getting a worksheet class from the spreadsheet class, and now we're currently in the worksheet class. Next, because we're about to work with styling, we call get style. Inside worksheet, there is a method called getStyle, which is to get style for cell and to get cell name as a parameter. And this method returns a style class. And this is the second chain. Now we're in the style class. 
Next, we are going to do something with number format, so we call get number format. Inside the style class, there is a get number format method, which returns a number format class. And upon calling this method, we finally arrived at the number format class. Then we can finally call the set format code. Let's use this format for the date. Let's try another format. Honestly, I have already tried this format beforehand, so I knew which one to use. Let's just trust me on this one. This is for the date and time. And this is for only time. In case you're wondering why I choose this not so simple method instead of just writing the date as a text, well, every computer may have different regional settings. People in some country may see 1 slash 2 as 2nd of January, while the rest of the world see it as a 1st of February. And this is the most reliable way to store a date time data. Now let's move on to rich text. You can imagine rich text like a Microsoft Word. In Excel, styling is done by cells. But with rich text, you can use different style in one cell like this. Rich text is slightly complex, so let's just get the example from the internet. Adding a rich text to a cell can be done using this rich text class. Let's just copy the code. Well, this code example is directly calling class namespace in object declaration. Personally, I don't like this way of calling class. So let's not do that, let's clean up the code a little bit. First, we move the namespace to the top. and just call the class name here. Setting the cell value this way is same as using the set cell value method, but longer. Well, explaining these codes will require a new video chapter. For now, let's just follow the example and add some text. I want to make it red, and this is a wild guess of a color red. Let's see the dogs for the color class. Seems that my guess is wrong. You can also define your own color using these methods. Let's not correct the mistake and try the code. 
and obviously we get undefined class constant error. Let's correct that. Next we're gonna make a hyperlink. There are two ways to make a hyperlink. First, by setting the cells as a link, and second, by using a formula. Now let's do the former. First, set a cell's value with text like usual. Then set that cell's hyperlink by calling get cell. Get hyperlink, set URL, let's use my YouTube channel here. And optionally, set a tooltip to tell something to the user. Now let's see the result. If I click the text, the URL will be opened in the browser. Now by using formula. There is a formula called hyperlink which takes two parameters. To write a formula, simply write it as a string as the cell's value. And last, change the worksheet name by simply call the setTitle method. This concludes this chapter of tutorial. I put the link to the source code in the description. Feel free to ask anything in the comment section. Please kindly like my video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.